Hey everybody, welcome back to Sophisticates by Mary. For this tutorial, I'm going to teach you a brand new buttercream. Brand new to me. This is a royal buttercream. Yes, it's royal icing buttercream. And I thought the perfect place to do this would be on one of these wave cakes because this buttercream is so silky smooth. These are the ingredients. I will put a link in the description box for the recipe. But what you, all you need to know at this point is that it is meringue powder. And then it's mixed with some powdered sugar. I just like to level off my teaspoons with my finger. You, you, can, you can use a knife if you prefer to do that. And I'm just putting in the powdered sugar. I did not even sift it, guys. Didn't even sift it. Put your paddle on. Mix those two together on low. Then we're going to add our water, which is basically, this is the royal icing part of this buttercream. Now I will say that this buttercream does not crust, guys. I know it's royal icing buttercream, but it does not crust. Now you're just going to let that combine until it gets all incorporated, like you can see, you can see happening very quickly. <laughs> Scrape your bowl down, make sure you everything is incorporated. And you don't even have to mix it that long. And then we're going to start by breaking up our butter chunks. This is room temperature butter. I used unsalted butter. And if I'm going and you can see how what I mean by room temperature. It's soft, but it's not too soft. You can stick your finger in it and it leaves a mark, but it doesn't um, it's not melting. Now we're going to add some vanilla. I would suggest actually adding some salt also. The recipe I used did not have salt, but I think salt would have taken it over the top. And then I just added a tiny bit of uh, violet food coloring to combat the yellow that you're going to get from the butter. And I just set it aside and left it to mix on a medium high speed. Actually, we'll say medium for at least 10 minutes. No kidding, at least 10 minutes. Now you can't see that happening, but it's going on in the background here. But in the meantime, I'm getting my cakes ready. And I'm just leveling off the tops. I like to hold my arm with my elbow tucked into my side and let my turntable do the turning for me. Once I have them leveled, I use some simple syrup to keep them moist. And then I'm just going to assemble each the tiers here. I'm using a thickened buttercream for the filling of this uh, cake, I did use just regular American buttercream because this uh, royal buttercream is very soft. Now you could use a dam and that would that would counteract it from, from um, squishing out the sides. A dam is just thickened buttercream, but I wouldn't make a dam with the royal buttercream. I don't think it would work so well. The customer wanted American buttercream as the filling, so that's why we're doing that and I'm just leveling it out before I put my next layer on and then I like to actually reinforce those seams with some more of the thickened buttercream just to make sure just to safeguard yourself that nothing is going to come pushing out the sides nobody likes bulges especially on cake <laughs> and then I'm just doing a thin layer of a crumb coat with the American just to lock in those crumbs. I had a few little little pieces of cake that wanted to stick to the side that needed to be removed. That's what that was. And then just smooth this down and remove that lip from the top before putting it in the refrigerator for 20 minutes or your freezer for 10 minutes. Typically I put the bottom tier in, well the tier that I'm crumb coating first in the freezer and by the time I'm done with my next tier, it is ready to have the final coat. So it just kind of goes that way, can kind of in a sequence that works for me. Then I'm doing the exact same thing for the top tier. And then when I get this one all smoothed out, then I will put it back in to the fridge or the freezer 
depending on which one you like better. I tend to stick with the freezer just because I work pretty, pretty quick. So they're ready for me when I'm ready. And this is what your buttercream looks like after a good 10 minutes of mixing on medium. So there's hardly any air bubbles. It's so smooth and silky. It really reminds me of Swiss meringue. It's um, a lot less sweet than American buttercream. And, that, and you can see that I added some more uh, violet food coloring to get this light lavenderish, or it's really just a light purple. And I just piped this on because if you have any remaining air bubbles, it does tend to help a little bit to pipe it through a piping bag because that forces some of the air bubbles to be popped as it's coming out of the tip of the piping bag versus just using your palette knife to, it, to apply it to your cake. It just kind of helps a little bit. And this buttercream is so smooth and silky, guys. Very light to the touch. It reminds me of working with um, whipped cream, but it's much more stable. And I just use the corner of my uh, scraper to create those wave patterns. You kind of hold it out at an angle. And I'm just removing the extra buttercream from the board. And of course, with a wave cake, you are going to need some dragées. So I just used a variety of different sizes of the pearl dragées. The bigger ones I just place one at a time and the smaller ones I'm just throwing at the cake. Since this is not a crusting buttercream, you don't have to worry about time so much. So kind of take your time, just throw these at it, but it is very soft so you wouldn't want to take the chance of getting your finger stuck, you know, making a finger indentation on it if with the smaller dragées. That's why I'm just throwing it on and it worked really well. Kind of keeps it a little bit more random also. And be sure to stick your bottom tier in your refrigerator or your freezer to get it prepared for assembly. Because since it is a butter-based buttercream, you it will when you put it in your when you chill it, it's going to firm up just like butter does at uh, refrigerator or freezer temperature versus room temperature. It's going to solidify. That's why it is still better to serve this at room temperature. This kind of a buttercream, definitely leave it at room temperature prior to serving. And I just did a little swirl pattern on the top. And again, adding those dragées. I'm just adding my support straws that are pre-cut to the height of the cake. Adding a little more buttercream and then bringing my chilled cake out of your freezer. 10 minutes in the freezer, I just sharpened a dowel there and I pounded it through the board on the bottom. So that makes it a little easier to lift it up and then I just pound that um, dowel straight through the middle and there your support is. And just fill that hole. And remember, both of these tiers are chilled. I would not attempt this without it being firm to the touch. And then I'm doing a little buttercream dam around the bottom to blend in any gap that you would have between the tiers. And since this is a softer buttercream, I'm just using, and it's kind of hard to get in there with that ridge on the top of that bottom tier, I'm just using a dampened brush to smooth that out. Now we had some already made, I'm not sure if these, I don't think they were way for paper, paper butterflies. Um, the customer wanted these, so we purchased them. This is for an actual order at the bakery, so this cake will be eaten for sure. <laughs> I get asked that question a lot. What do you do with your cakes? But this one is for an order. And I'm just using some more of the buttercream attached to the back of these butterflies to stick them in place. And add a little bit more buttercream underneath any that you need some extra height on. Now, I'm sorry, I, I think I, I've told you guys before, but just a reminder, I am learning this camera. 
This is a brand new camera to me, and if I get too close to the camera, it picks up on my skin tone versus the cake. So it goes out of focus when I move, but when I stop moving, it comes back in focus. I promise I will work on this and get better at it. <laughs> I love the camera. That is my one thing that I'm kind of struggling with. Then I added a little ribbon to the bottom to tie it all together. And there you go, guys. This is a very springy cake, and I think it's gorgeous, and I highly recommend using this recipe. And I hope you love it as much as I do. Just might be one of my new favorites. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my video. And if you'd like to watch some other videos, go ahead and click on the link to one of these other videos shown here. And if you would like to check out my other social media, I am on Facebook and Instagram under the same name, Sophisticates by Mary. And please take the time to share like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you know when I upload another video. Thank you so much, and we'll catch you on the next tutorial.